recording here. And we are incredibly excited today to introduce you to the National Fluid Power Association. Um, this may be a little bit different. Usually, you know, we talk to an individual company. Today, you've got an entire industry sector being represented. So regardless of where you're looking to go or work in the United States, fluid power is everywhere. The other thing I'm really excited about today is usually the companies you might get to hear from on events like this are larger corporations. Today, you're getting to talk to two very small family owned manufacturers. And I tell you what, the culture and the climate in companies like that are so very different um, in a very positive way, I think myself. So uh, we're excited to be able to bring that opportunity to you as well. So I'm going to go ahead at this point and turn it over to Eric Pinnell, who is the Workforce Program Manager at the National Fluid Power Association. Eric? Thank you. Welcome everyone. My name is Eric Pinnell, Workforce Program Manager at National Fluid Power Association, or NFPA. NFPA is a proud sponsor of Heroes Make America, and we're excited to be here to talk about fluid power industry. First off, a special thank you to all the military and personnel and veterans on the call. Today, we're going to start with a brief overview of fluid power industry. Then we're going to have two of our member companies talk about their available careers. To start it off, let's to begin to um, some insight into fluid power industry. The Fluid Power Association is a trade or association representing hydraulics and pneumatics industry. Our members represent the entire fluid power supply chain. As an association, our mission is to strengthen fluid power, this fluid power industry. And we do that by focusing on four strategic objectives. First, we provide an effective forum where our members can connect with each other and their customer OEMs, original equipment manufacturers, and their related technology partners. We provide fluid partner industry statistics and business intelligence that help members <clears throat> improve decision making. Three, we provide opportunities, opportunities and resources to better promote fluid power technology. And four, what I do, we help educate and train people in fluid power and connecting them to careers in our industry. Next slide, please. Our manufacturers members are companies that design, manufacture, and sell fluid power components such as pumps, valves, cylinders, and hoses. Our distributors members are companies that sell, build, and sell system um, compromise of those components. Our supplier members are companies that provide raw materials that service needed to make those components. Next slide. Fluid power is a term that describes related technology, hydraulics and pneumatics. Both technology use a fluid, either a liquid or gas to transform power into control motion. It's the workhorse of the US economy. Fluid power systems transmute more power in a smaller space than other forms of power transmission. Making it the cross, cross cutting technology of choice for dozens of industries and hundreds of applications. Among of those, those advantages, hydraulic offers high power to weight ratio, high torque at very low speeds, the ability to hold torque is constant, uh, overall ruggedness and reliability. Among many advantages, pneumatics compared to ins inexpensive and lightweight, offers simple control systems, is clean, non-reactive magnetic environments, and activates with extreme speeds and precision. Next slide, please. Because of this, these advantages, you, you may look where you might find fluid, um, fluid power, just about everywhere. And FPA uses the social media hashtag only fluid power can to educate the general public on fluid power impacts on their lives. For example, in aerospace, only fluid power can lift a jumbo jet, bankroll a fighter plane, and keep a rocket on course. In power generation, only fluid power can harvest energy from winds and waves. In construction and mining equipment, only fluid power can build roads and buildings, move mountains when necessary. In cars and semi-trucks, only fluid power can make these vehicles easy to steer and stop and provide a power to boost flu fuel. In agricultural equipment, fluid power can feed the world by planting and harvesting mass fields. 
and entertainment only fluid power can in, in animate rise and monsters at our amusement parks. So when we talk about US, next slide please. <clears throat> so when we talk about US fluid power industry it is the manufacturer of those components that we are talking about, the pumps, the motors, the valves, the cylinders, the actuators, the hoses, the fitting that all connect them. As you can see from this chart, the industry is about an $18 billion business in the United States. Of the total, roughly 75% is business is hydraulics and 25% of the business is pneumatics. 2020 was slightly down due from <clears throat> COVID-19. 2021 shows a major bounce back in the size and growth in the fluid power industry. Next slide. US power, <clears throat> fluid power is also a significant employer in the United States. The US Census Bureau tracks employment data for hundreds of industries. Based on the data collected by the US Census Bureau, we can estimate that at least 744 companies are engaged in these activities in the United States. Collectively, these companies employ 64,936 people with an annual payroll of at least $4.4 billion. These fluid power <clears throat> employees reside in 34 of the 50 states, the 10 states with the highest number of the employer, employers in, are Ohio, Michigan, Illinois, California, New York, Texas, Wisconsin, Minnesota, and Kentucky. Next slide. There's our many exciting career opportunities in fluid power, in the fluid power industry. An FPA members company report that they need design engineers who can design fluid power systems, components, as well as develop new concepts, applications, and improvements of existing installations. They need sales engineer who can market sell fluid power systems, components, work closely with fluid power manufacturers, distributors, and customers. They need mechanics who can assemble and install fluid power systems and components, as well as troubleshoot maintaining systems on a machines used in every facet of the industry. And they need technicians who can operate machines equipped with fluid power systems, as well as manufacture and test fluid power systems and components. Take a look at the system on the vertical drill piece picture on the slide. Machines that are used to drill into solid rock, harnessing and focusing an incredible force, forces of hydraulic systems and otherwise impossible tasks. Creating these complex systems, design them, designing them, selling them, assembling them, maintaining them is a challenging, rewarding work that the fluid power industry offers. Anyone with a me <clears throat> mechanical aptitude and desire for variety in their work is a potential hire for our industry. Next slide. And as you can take a look, these are the type of salary and uh, typical education you would need to work in the fluid power industry. A design engineer um, with a bachelor's degree can make a, an average salary of 90,000. Um, sales engineer with a bachelor's degree, 108,000. Mechanic associate's degree, 50,000, 57,000. Technician, 61,000 with an associate degree, and machinist, 45,000 with a GED slash high school diploma. Next slide, please. Um, today, I have the opportunity to present two of our member companies, Clipper and Moses. And I would like to introduce next Jennifer Kunin, Vice President of HR at Clipper's Instr Instrumentals Laboratories. Thank you, Eric. First and foremost, um, thank you for your service and dedication and sacrifice that you've given for our country and us citizens. And second most, thank you for your time to learn more about Clipper. My name is Jennifer Conan. I'm the Vice President of Human Resources. I've been here 24 years and I'm a third generation Clipper. My grandfather started the business 75 plus years ago. I also want to introduce Mike Kettering, Mike, if you want to introduce yourself. Yes, thank you, Jennifer. I'm, I'm Mike Kettering, and I am the electronic valves product manager with Clippard. I've been with Clippard for just about eight years. Thanks, Mike. 
So as you can see, we're a manufacturer of miniature control solutions, something that Eric highlighted in the pneumatic space, that improve life and animate the world. We'll move on to a, a little bit of facts about Clippert. Clippert is based in the Cincinnati area in the Tri-State. We have our headquarters actually in Florine Township. We have manufacturing in two locations in Cincinnati and Fairfield, Ohio, about 20 minutes apart, to be honest. Um, 220 plus employees. We are the inventor and a pioneer of miniature controls. 55% of our workforce is actually represented by women in manufacturing at all levels. And we are growing, as you can see at the bottom. It's been an exciting last five years. And we looked to highlight some of the, the areas of where we're growing. We'll go on to the next one. So I believe I have a video or a credo. Our credo is, is our values at Clippert. And I'm, I'm not gonna read this, but I, I want to highlight some things that would probably resonate with each of you. You know, we are engaged in honorable work. We provide the work with useful and productive, affordable products, very purposeful products. Um, we do this with distinction of quality, long reputation of service and performance. We have quality people, quality products as our logo. We deal fairly, keep our word. We understand that profit's not a vehicle to our purposes and not only for our purpose. And we support our community. Community is very big to us at Clifford. We are engaged in over $100,000 in kind and financial to our, our local communities to support students in the tech career programs to FIRST Robotics. And as you can see, you know, we are very devoted to our faith in God for our blessings. We respect and encourage others. We should pride in our work. And we have this chant. It sounds like a Friday, Friday night or Saturday morning football game. We are Clippered. So we, we have a lot of fun here. It's a very collaborative environment. And we have a video that we're gonna show, show you that talks about our employee brand. Now let's go, to, go on to the video. When we put people first, what could we accomplish? We could solve bigger problems. When our team puts people first, we understand their goals and what they want to accomplish and what obstacles stand in their way. It's in our DNA to care about people's success, both internally and externally. When their problems become our problems, that's essentially how a family operates. And that's what moves us forward. We could improve lives. By helping to make products affordable with less power consumption, life is simpler and more comfortable. It is the combination of our people working together with our customers that helps to make the greatest leaps in innovation. In a lot of cases, we are creating products that are a part of saving people's lives. I love that that's part of my job every day. We could make a positive impact on our community. This community is our community. Creating jobs means helping schools, businesses, and families. Here in our neighborhood. That's huge to us. It is important for us to take the opportunity to mentor the next generation. They're the ones next in line to make a difference in this world. We recognize that and see it as an opportunity to continue our legacy and propel this culture forward. We are Clippered. We believe people come first. When you put people first, your products become known for quality, service, performance, and value. Our customers are an extension of our family. Working together, we can solve greater problems than working alone. We believe honorable work should set the tone for a company's mindset. At Clippert, when we put people first, we hugely impact lives. And we animate the world. I hope you enjoyed that video. It just gives a little little visual into our world here at Clifford. And we certainly have more um, stories to come in just a second. We're gonna talk a little bit about our applications and this is what we call our purpose. And I'm actually gonna ask Mike to kind of talk maybe about one or two of these applications that we have been working on. Yes, thanks, Jan. So the first one here is, is in my opinion, probably one of the most exciting applications we have on this board, which is 3D bioprinting. So we're actually working with a customer who's making a 3D printer to print with living tissue. And that's that's a challenging application. And the way Clipper is attacking the application is instead of uh, moving this ink, which has living tissue in it with a traditional uh, peristaltic pump, which can damage the cells, 
we're moving that liquid with very low pressure that we have to very precisely control. Another exciting um, application on here is medical monitoring. This is an application that can be potentially life or death. So you'll see we've got a pretty complicated manifold there for medical monitoring, which we are very precisely controlling the flow for a calibration of uh, what is called a shunt sensor, which is actually what monitors the oxygen in your exhalation during a surgery. So that way, when you're on the operating table, the doctors can confidently know how much oxygen is getting into your bloodstream. Thanks, Mike, for sharing just a few of those um, applications. And we certainly have many. This board is just a small, actually, sampling of what our capabilities are at Clifford. And uh, you can see that um, anything you can move um, and control, small, minute amounts of um, pressure of liquid or gas, um, we are in that space with Clifford. So it's pretty exciting. We're going to um, talk about our success factors. And so I have two slides on that. People ask us, what makes us successful? Well, here it is. Our people, our people make us, our, make us very successful. And we have such a, an amazing team of people. Um, some of them have been here 40 years. On average, you know, most people have been here about 12 years in a lifetime at Clifford. That ranges from people that are brand new to people, like I said, that have been here 40. We have a large group that we hired in 1987 that has been here um, going on 30 three years, believe it or not. So it's, it's pretty exciting to have such a, a long tenure group and a lot of new talent coming into Clipper. And so the uh, next slide I have is another, um, just pictures, highlights our culture, maybe some of the things that people are working on from our assembly, there's Tracy up there in the, the left-hand corner to um, Mary in the left, the bottom left corner. Um, we have our machinist, Dave Merck. We have um, our assemblers on our fearful floor. And you can see that we've done events like uh, for um, all kinds of Christmas or <laughs> the Derby, if we get the Derby hat in Halloween. We have a lot of fun at what we do. Um, we've always had the expression that, um, you know, you hear about the freshman 15 in college or in school. Uh, we have the Clipper 30s. <laughs> we celebrate a lot, have a good time. It's highly collaborative. So we want to share a story with you. And this is actually um, no stranger to Mike Kettering. This is his brother, Brian Kettering, who's been with our company 20 years and nine months. So I have a video that I'm going to share with you on his story and where he is in the um, robotics space. I started here from being a co-op at Coleraine High School in the machine trades program. Coming out of high school, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. I kind of just saw this machine trade program and looked like something neat to do. We try to improve upon all our processes here, embrace new technology, robotics. There's a lot to do in the future that's going to have to do with robotics. Everything's getting more competitive. Everything needs to be faster, more efficient, higher quality. There's all kinds of new technology we're getting into. We have a very good team here. It, it's a great place to work, in, in my opinion. They want you to learn. They give you the freedom to learn. They give you the freedom to fail. Not everything you try is gonna work out the first time. It's nice to be able to use your imagination, use your problem-solving skills, not sit at a desk all day. This is definitely not a dead-end job. Great story. We have many, many like that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna put Mike on the spot a little bit just to talk about um, maybe how he came to Clifford and his career path in his journey. Yeah, so I've been with Clifford coming up on eight years. I had an opportunity when there was an opening for a technical sales position, which I interviewed and it sounded like a really exciting opportunity. I, I was a little bit concerned um, coming in, as I was worried it might be a job where I'd be, you know, sitting at a desk all day. But well, I was really happy once I started because it, I found out it was really a hands-on job, and I was all over the uh, both of our plants, the Colerain and the Fairfield plants, and it was always learning something new. And um, and then there was was the application side. 
it was every couple of minutes, it was a call from a customer and it was a different application. One day it could have been uh, a valve on an over the road tractor and the next day it's a valve and a ventilator or, and 10 minutes later, it's, a, it's something on a production line. So it's just, it was really amazing seeing, you know, where fluid power is, it's everywhere. Thank you, Mike, for sharing your story. So we talked about some career paths and Mike just shared one of his. So on the next slide, we have a, a few, I mean, lots of opportunities. So maybe we don't have um, all those positions open, but you certainly uh, want to think of Clippard as maybe your destination of choice for a career path or, or a working family. Um, we have in sales and marketing, there's such a broad area of territory sales, customer service, tech sales, as, as Mike started out, advertising, marketing, um, product brand, um, product managers, which where is Mike today? Engineering, we have applications manufacturing, which spans into industrial engineering, and then new product development. Um, operations, you know, there's a plethora of opportunities there. Production planning, data analysts, purchasing, purchasing production, machining. People ask me, what about the data analysts and operations? Well, we want to capture a lot of data on the floor, and it's very important to be able to have that data so we can make meaningful and impactful ch changes at a pivot's notice um, with as much as things are changing rapidly out there in the um, world. And quality, um, we're always looking for quality technicians. We're actually gonna be growing our quality department. We don't have positions open right now. Um, we're always with, worked on continuous improvement. In administration, you have the span from the human resource, payroll be benefits, um, corporate governance, risk management and safety and accounting finance. We're big on cost accounting and um, looking for an accounting specialist and an accounting right now. And then information technology, we have system admin, desktop support and data processing, as well as um, web support and anything that can support our, our employees here. The next slide I have is for our open positions and these do change. So please check back with us at Clifford. But we have right now a need for a CNC maintenance technician. Um, that's someone that's been working on CNC milling and turning machines uh, like Swiss's, uh, Citizens, uh, Stars, Nakamura's, um, and um, a few other really amazing machines. General labor, we're always looking for people in assembly and parts finishing. Um, we are looking for a Midwest regional sales manager at this time. If you're interested in being a road warrior, please contact us. And then I mentioned the accountant and we're looking for a machine operator. Again, as we're growing, new positions come up out every so often. So think of us at clipper.com and come visit us on our webpage. Um, you'll find our careers tab at the bottom left-hand corner. We'll send some links, I think, out there in um, the chat room. And thank you for your time. Thank you, Jennifer. And next, I would like to introduce Christy Zuma, HR Officer at Mosey's Production Machinists. Okay, better. <laughs> um, hi, I'm Christy Zmuda, and I work with Mosey's Production Machinist as their Chief Human Resources Officer. I have been here 23 years. We are in Anaheim, California. Our company is 47 years old today. We are a veteran owned, family owned company. So family is really important to us and culture is very important to us. Um, we do have a video that will show you a little bit about us. So if you wanna show the video. Well, this production Machinist is a small machine shop located in Anaheim, California. We manufacture components, metal and plastic that go inside other people's equipment. So we don't have a product of our own, but we do machine the parts and make parts for other people's products. So out in the shop, you're going to see everything from um, shipping and receiving where material comes in to where finished product goes out the door. And in between, you're going to see lots of different kinds of equipment, mostly computer controlled equipment, a lot of automation and you're gonna see all the different parts that we make uh, on a daily basis. Our customers have a wide range of industries that we work for. So anywhere from oil and gas, or otherwise known as in, uh, energy. We also do uh, aerospace work. We do medical device, uh, stuff like medical laboratory equipment. 
A lot of the parts we make go into ventilators to help people breathe. So there's many different careers here at Mosey's Production Machine. As we have out in the shop, the shipping and receiving people, the truck driver, we have set up people to set up the machines. We have uh, operators who operate the machines. We have robots that run the parts as well. Uh, we also have programmers that program all the CNC machines. We have quality managers and quality inspectors to make sure we're making the parts to the specs required by the customer. If you'd like to work here at Mosey's or a company like ours, you come in with skills that you've already learned elsewhere or in school, or sometimes we even hire people that are inexperienced and we train them ourselves. Out on the, on the floor, you can make anywhere from entry level from $17 an hour as high as six figures in a year. So uh, it just depends on how much you want to do and how much you like to learn and continue to learn. As you see the robots here on the floor uh, look like they're eliminating positions. They're not. They actually created new jobs. The skill set that's needed to keep and manage the robots is even more robust than just learning how to machine. So I encourage even our longtime machinists to continue to learn, to go back to school, read as much as possible, and learn about the different aspects of programming these robots and the different kinds of uh, automation, because that's the future of manufacturing. So the more you learn about computer science, about programming, and understanding how automation works, the, the better off you'll be in the long term. So um, as you can see here by this slide, we're big on numbers. We have um, 28 employees currently, and we are looking to add more. Um, we have three shifts. When, when we say three shifts and one manned, we have a day shift that has employees here all day until 2.30, not all day. Um, and then we have, as you see, robots and linear pallet pool systems that run 24-7. And we just have someone come in every once in a while and reload and make sure everything's going great, no problems. And they also monitor them at home from cameras. Um, we've been here, that says 46, needs to be up, updated. We're 47 years. We're currently on our third generation. So Bob Mosey, the gentleman you saw, his parents started the company and his son now is our CFO. Uh, next slide. These are some of the industries we're in, medical laboratory, medical device, aerospace, hydraulics, aircraft refueling. We make the parts that are on, you know, on the tarmac, on the floor that help you re refuel, um, pneumatics, oil, gas, laser equipment, little bit of automotive, not a whole lot there. Industrial equipment, the next slide, please. And this is something we're very proud of. Uh, the owner, as I said, is a veteran. He was in the Air Force. And he has tried for several years to get this certification here. And we recently just got it. And it's, it's great. It's awesome. As I said, we're very proud. We do have veterans who work here currently with us. We have Bob, who's the president. Uh, we have a retired ranger as our sales. And we have in our quality department, a gentleman who was in the army for 10 years. So we do like to definitely pull from that pool of people for sure. Next slide. These are um, some of the parts, just an example of parts. As I said, we're very family oriented. We love to hire for culture. If you have the aptitude to learn, you can learn anything. So if you think that you, you may want to come here and you might wanna apply for a machinist. We have a gentleman who applied to be a machinist and we kind of looked at his background, saw what he could do. And we started him as the machinist, ran him through our whole program, shipping and receiving, order entry, taking POs. And now he's our procurement specialist. We just thought that he could do more than just machining. So you may not get that job you hired for. We may see this and talk to you and see how, how you feel about that and move you on to something else. Next slide. And these are our values that we believe strongly in. 
honesty. Honesty is very, very, very important. And it's something that we do with our customers as well. And it's nice to hear them say, it wasn't what I wanted to hear, but I appreciate it. So truthfulness is very important to us. Integrity is very important. That says a lot about us as people and about us as a company. And we're very customer focused. We have been with customers. We are in it when they are planning the program and we help them through it and plan it and work through any problems they may have. And then we get to see the end product and we get to build the whole kit, which is really, really nice to see. Um, relationships are very important to us as well with our customers, our employees, and our suppliers. That's something that um, the owners have passed down through the generations is your family is first. We're a company, we'll be here, we take your time, we've got you. We like to invest in our people. We do an, um, a reimbursement program for education as well. So we're very big in investing in our people to make them better. Because together, if we're better, our, our customers are better for that. And stewardship is very big for us. We share our God-given talents with all that we do, including support of the manufacturing industry. We do um, manufacturing days. I don't know if that's something Clifford knows anything about does. We bring um, students from junior high all the way through college through here in October, and they just get to tour and sometimes get to play with the robots. Um, so they really enjoy that. We help with the um, National Robotics League. So we like to do a lot to help the schools in our area as well. The next slide, please. And this is our family right now. Uh, it's a lot of people here and I'm looking at them. This gentleman in the lower right hand corner with that nice mustache. He has been here over 40 years. His name is Fernando and he is just the best ever. Um, so we have a, a, you know, a wide variety of people here and everybody just, it's like a family. You fight and then you love each other. <laughs> Not real fights, but you know, you get along and then you don't get along, but we all eventually come back together to work as a team. Next slide. And this is what our shop floor looks like. Yeah. I wanted to see if that was a, a newer picture and it is. And right now we're currently looking for CNC machinist setup personnel, CNC programmers, quality, from just inspecting to quality manager. Um, so if you're interested, definitely, you know, my information will be in the chat and you can send us some information on you. I think that's it. Is that it? That's my last slide, correct? Okay, <laughs> I wasn't sure. <laughs> it is, and then I lost my controls, so. Thank you, Christy and Jennifer, um, and of course, Eric, for, for sharing so much about fluid power and your um, individual companies as well. Like I said, you don't often get to hear um, in this type of event from smaller organizations like this. So it's, um, you know, part of what we love about Heroes Connect is showing you the diversity available in manufacturing. And it's not just the diversity in products that are being made. It's about those different types of work environments and company cultures and um, all of that. And I think that uh, both Clippard and Moses have done a really good job of showing you the inside of their facilities today without being able to actually take you there in person. So um, thank you again for, for putting these great presentations together. At this point, we wanna go ahead and open the floor up to our participants. So if you have questions, um, now here's the thing, we know not everybody is looking to go to Ohio or to California. They will you know, gladly entertain you if that's where you're wanting to go, but we understand, right? That not everybody is um, looking to go to those locations. So use this as an educational opportunity, not just, you know, as a, recruitment to, to get into the company, but what can you learn more about the industry from any of these folks as well? So if you want to use that raise hand feature, we will start fielding questions. 
And I know too, um, our Fort Riley group, I think is in the classroom together. They're all in one meeting. So if we need to unmute for somebody down there to ask a question or if Rachel wants to send it to the chat, whatever works best for you all. Jen, if, if it's okay, if I just volunteer oh. something. Yeah. I just wanted to uh, encourage you, even if you're not interested in Ohio or, or California, we have distribution worldwide and all over the states. And I believe networking is very powerful. So I would encourage you to connect with Christy and myself and Mike, because we might be able to connect you with somebody in the state of your choice and you never know that, that career is right around the corner and we could help you. That is absolutely true. I think um, within the industry, so many people are interconnected that, um, you know, it's just like you say, right? You're not manufacturing your own parts, you're making them for other people. And you think of how many other companies that just you two here are representing, not even considering the entire, you know, NFPA right now as well, so. And I would like to just add note that we do have member uh, industry members and we have over 300 of them and they are hiring and you can go to our website, which I think they're gonna drop in the chat. Um, they, we do update um, our, uh, their career sites. You can look on, um, on the workforce and they'll list open availabilities of our members who are looking for positions. So please check there if you're looking, maybe there's a um, state that you're looking for. I have a question for both Christy and Jennifer. Um, just because it's a little bit different with, with every manufacturer, how far out in advance should the participants apply for positions? Because everybody here might be at a different period in their transition. So what is the hire? Um, the hiring link look like going through from, from interviewing to, to starting? For us, um, we always take applications because you never know. It may not be that we're looking for it right now, but if we see it, we may look at that and go, oh, we could now do what we wanted to do. We just couldn't find that person and we're not all the way there, but you can help us build that program from the ground up. And then you really have a hand in it and then you own it. So I, for us, anytime. I would, I would echo exactly what Christy is saying. Anytime, I mean, anytime that you can connect with us, you never know when the opportunity presents itself. It, it may be that we actually see a, a mutual opportunity with you if you present some um, interest and talents and skills and like, oh man, you know, we could grow in this area if we have this individual or we might be able to plug you into a you know another opportunity at uh, one of our our business partners so i would say there's never never a wrong time but be persistent and, and reach out uh, as often as you can The Fort Riley class has asked, what's one piece of advice you'd give someone when preparing or participating in an interview? Some do's or don'ts um, as those who are actually hiring in manufacturing. We can start off. Um, do's, do be yourself. <laughs> uh, be your authentic self. I mean, we, you know, we want it to be a mutual um, agreement. If, if you um, are not sure about um, the job and you, you go ahead and apply, you always reach out to uh, an HR team member at, at Clippard or you could, or any, any, any company or somebody in the company, connect with them on LinkedIn. Um, that's a really great way to, to get some information about the organization, research their culture. Um, obviously this right now is a market where it is employee choice and you should be picky. Um, we'd encourage you. We would love for you to think about Clifford, we'd love for you to come to us, um, but, you know, be picky. Um, but certainly um, just be, as I said, persistent, uh, follow up, you know, open those communication lines and that will, that will help you be successful. 
I'll second what Jen just said as well is just be yourself. Don't, don't worry about acting, you know, proper and just, just come in as yourself. It's, it's an interview for a job, but it's just like any other relationship. Same thing. Communication is key. If you, you want something, just make sure you, like she said, you're persistent, you follow up. Um, connect on LinkedIn. That's great. Get to know other people. They may tell you stuff we may not tell you, you know, I mean, so I mean, something we may not think of something they think is really cool that I think is a given, but you know, to them, it's, 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 it's great, because I kind of grew up here. So to me, all of this stuff we do is kind of a given. It's just how we treat people. So I would agree with all of those. Denise, go ahead. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I want to introduce myself, um, Denise McLeod. Um, I think there was a little bit of miscommunication with my contact at the VA when I expressed to them that I was looking for work and they recommended this link, uh, the Zoom meeting. Um, I'm self-employed as a freight agent looking for manufacturers to work with. So I didn't know if I should stay on the Zoom and allow the other participants to continue, but I did want to introduce myself before I left and provide my contact information. Um, I'm based out of New York and um, I'll leave a link, but I didn't want to just disconnect abruptly. Well, we surely appreciate that. I'm sorry for the mix up, but we're happy that you joined us either way, Denise. Thank you. And I <laughs> enjoyed about listening about the companies. Um, hopefully we can work together in the future. Um, and I wish y'all all the best and thank you all for your service. Thank you, Denise. You have a good one. You too. All right. Whether, excuse me. Do we have other questions in the audience? I know we have a few people on that are um, sitting there probably I sent my group a message. They haven't checked their phones. <laughs> ZC, you're the one, the chosen one. All righty. Uh, so I actually did have a question. Uh, I was looking on the website for um, positions in Maryland, and I can't find something to like search for areas. specifically on the NFPA Foundation website. Eric's on it. So, so sorry, our website is pretty new. Um, our website is pretty new, so give us some time. If you haven't been able to search by sites, we do have 300 companies, member companies. Um, I think uh, if my understanding is correct, our website just launched last week, Monday. So give us some time. We'll continue right. to add websites, um, update our member companies. But as for now, those are the companies we have listed and our workforce program manager will be continuing to update those. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thank you. Eric, if he were to reach out to you directly, um, like through LinkedIn, would that be something that you could help him specifically connect with member companies in the area? Of course, I, I will be more than help, happy to um, search for member companies. Um, we work with member companies. I work with member companies on a daily basis. I'm based out of Wisconsin currently in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but um, I will definitely don't mind helping you connect with any member companies. Yeah, Keenan. The unmute button's in the bottom left. There we go. Okay, I think I have everything connected now. Um, so I too am bouncing around the NFPA uh, website here, and um, the uh, 
Well, I, I realize it's more of a overview website of the various partners that, um, that you all work with here. Um, I was curious um, what opportunities for, uh, for remote work usually present themselves in such industries and whether or not um, there, there are frequently uh, perhaps sales or support positions that people would be able to, uh, to apply for while still um, you know, tending to their families and all of the, the other benefits of a work from home position. Good question. So I would say personally, um, I know we currently have a two, um, two days work from home and three days in the office, but for our members, industry members, I know that some of them, especially um, some have um, hybrids, some don't. I can't give you exact information, but I definitely will say that depending on what area you're looking for, I can definitely reach out to our member, industry members to see if they have any um, um, positions that are hybrid or work from home or whatnot. But for sure, uh, if you connect with me, I can definitely look for you. Interesting. Thank you. I was going to just comment real quick, Keenan. Um, you know, at Clipper, we have our, our territory sales. They're, they can live in their territory, so they can live, you know, in their home. Um, mm -hmm. They do travel. I mean, the travel can be um, definitely up to 70%, but sometimes that means you're still coming home at the end of the day to your family. So I, I would just reach out to employers, you know, and ask them, you know, could I live in my territory? Um, if, it's, if it's not yes at this time, I would say it's not a no forever. Okay, good insight. Any other questions? This is a quiet group today. All right. Well, if we have answered all of the questions, I'm gonna go ahead and reshare here if I can get my stuff up. All right, so, um, Oh, Eric Kent, go for it. Uh, this question is just really for the uh, NFPA. And what what's an advantage of a company being an associated or being with the uh, NFPA? Like as far as the company goes, like. Okay, so we provide. Um, so I can tell you a little bit about what I do and what. Um, Overall, so we provide, um, as I mentioned earlier, we provide four of strategic objectives. We provide a forum for our members so they can connect with each other. Um, sometimes our members buy each other out. Sometimes they connect in other ways. Uh, provide fluid power industry statistics. We actually hire someone in our uh, in our um, in our office who are actually focus just on statistics for our for our business partners or industry members. Um, so they can help make decisions on supply chains and stuff like that, provide opportunities and resources for modern fluid power technology. So um, conferences, stuff like that, we promote, we all overall promoting just the fluid power industry. Um, and for us, what I do is just educating and training, um, working with different organizations and education centers and schools and stuff like that, just educating. Um, we're trying to work with making sure that people are able to continue to work in fluid power. So from middle school to high school, all the way to technical schools, to universities, making sure that people are interested in uh, fluid power. One of the things I've known in the past, if we start them early with, with the interest in fluid power, um, most likely they will have an interest going through college and finding a position that is related to fluid power. Okay. All right. Thanks. Yeah. I was just curious, you know, if this is kind of like pipe fitters of America kind of, kind of concept or anything, if it's going to get into, into something much larger um, uh, down the line. That's kind of where I was going with that. Right. But thank you. 
One thing I always like to point out too, Amy, I don't know if you mind speaking, but some of you I know may be looking at continuing your education as well. So Amy, can you talk a little bit about your scholarship? Sure, absolutely. Thanks, Jen. We do have um, two scholarship programs, one of which would be um, more applicable to, to individuals in this group, and that's our Food Power Scholarship. It's a $2,000 scholarship where um, if you're in an engineering degree program and you're interested in fluid power um, and you're going and you want to go to a tech school or a university and enroll in one of those programs, um, you're eligible to apply for that scholarship. Um, the scholarship goes towards tuition costs. So it's, um, it's a really great program. We all know that tuition is not cheap, so it definitely helps put a little dent in that. Um, and that's just one thing that we can certainly help. Um, thank you, Lauren, for dropping the link. So the application is open now. It is closing on April 3rd, so that's coming up quick. So um, with the application, we ask for an essay question, um, letter of recommendation. Um, honestly, it's really not too time consuming. Um, we also ask that if you can um, provide, again, this is for students going to a tech school or university. So we would ask for like an enrollment letter, just verifying that you got accepted in the program. Um, but in terms of the specific degree, it's really open and we keep that open and on purpose because food power is found within so many different degree programs. Um, you usually don't find it as a standalone degree. So it's in mechatronics, um, it's in mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, computer science even, um, a lot of associate degrees that are focused on, um, you know, it could be a maintenance um, degree that you're looking for, industrial maintenance or an automation program. So um, feel free to check out that information and let us know if you have any questions. And I would say not just for yourselves, it's great for you all. I know many of you have GI Bill as well, but if you're like me with a high school senior or a student maybe even that's looking at college, great opportunity there. So thanks, Amy. All right, well, um, I hope that everybody can see my next step slide here. So we always wanna leave you with something, right? Um, we have several links for the different companies in the NFPA that Lauren has been putting in the chat for you. So take a look at those. You can explore the different roles in each of the companies. You can get familiar. Um, and if you have a specific location that you're looking to go to, you know, the NFPA is wonderful about breaking down where their member companies are. You may not see it on their website, but your program managers um, with Heroes Make America can get in touch with them and, and get that search done for you too. So wanted to put that out there. Again, connect with everybody, including following the companies on LinkedIn. Um, connect with our team, of course, if you haven't done so already. And remember that these events are um, about education and awareness and the perception within manufacturing to help you really identify the place, the company, the location, the position that is really the right fit for you. And there's something different out there for everyone. So I'm sorry about whoever's rolling down my street here with their big old diesel. Um, but we do have another event next Wednesday, uh, March 30th, same time that's going to be with Novellus, Novellus Aluminum. So um, if you have not done so, there's a poll on the screen. If you'll take just a couple minutes, there's, I think, four different questions to scroll through there and respond to. But otherwise, um, we appreciate everybody taking the time today to come and join and learn. But um, to Eric and Amy at the National Fluid Power Association, Christy, Jennifer, and Mike, thank you all for, again, taking the time out of your busy schedules to share with our group more about the opportunities in flu power. So we couldn't, couldn't do it without you. So with that, I hope everyone has a wonderful day and we will see you again soon.